Hello everybody and welcome back to FX Street. My name is Akash and today we're going to be taking a look at scaling in and how you can kind of profit off of this. It's it's kind of piggybacks of the DCA idea, but a little different, right? So before we actually get into what it means and how you can uh, use this strategy to uh, get a better uh, cost average uh, position, uh, make sure to stick around and watch. So before we actually get into the details, please make sure to head on over to our YouTube channel and hit the subscribe button. And if you want to stay updated to the hottest trends in the crypto market and the content that we put out almost on a regular basis, make sure to also uh, click on this bell icon. You can give us a follow on Twitter at FXS Crypto. And if you enjoy the content that I put out, make sure to give me a follow as well at Mangeko with a zero at the end. Right, so what is scaling in? Right, uh, scaling in, uh, the basic definition of scaling in uh, from Investopedia kind of states that it's, it's a trading strategy that involves buying shares as the price of an asset continues to drop. So it's basically uh, what Warren Buffett you always say is Buffet, Buffet. Yeah, so Warren Buffett, right? So he says that buy when there's blood in the market, right? It basically is the the whole idea of scaling in is that. So how you do it is you wait for the price. So when you know that an asset is going to bottom and reverse, that's when you actually start buying, uh, scaling into a particular coin. So, uh, the best example for this was Michael Saylor and what he did, right? So back when Bitcoin price was uh, around in the 10th of May or something, I think he started buying, hold up, I think I have that. Right, so MicroStrategy started buying Bitcoin uh, somewhere in the August of 2020 and they started scaling in. Now this is a little different because the, the asset was rising, the price of the asset was rising. But basically what they did is what happened between uh, after the Bitcoin price hit an all-time high at 65k and it crashed all the way down to 29-28k. Uh, right? Between this period what MicroStrategy did was it continued buying a lot of Bitcoin and it bought a lot of Bitcoin here. Now what it does is as you continue buying an asset during its fall, you your total average continues to decrease as well. But the, the whole reasoning behind scaling in is that you accumulate a lot of the stock when other people are selling, right? Mostly what happens during, after a top is formed is that the investors start to book profit and it kind of snowballs and people start to panic sell, uh, which leads to a frenzy and then a massive crash, right? Uh, over here, as you can see here, we saw something similar happen. And in this case, the panic and the frenzy kind of set in after the, the, the initial Domino was basically Luna and then there was Celsius and then there was 3AC and then now we have uh, BlockFi and Nexo caught in the crossfire. So as the asset continues to decrease, in this case Bitcoin, as Bitcoin's price continues to decrease, that's, that's when you start deploy your funds. Basically you buy Bitcoin at 30k and then 20k and then at 10k. Uh, this basically averages out your price. Now, this is an effective strategy during a bear market, and that's exactly where we're in right now. Uh, so let's let's get into the technical analysis, right? Uh, say, so right now the we can assume two things. The first thing is Bitcoin bottoms here. What happened here on uh, in the second week of June, right? Bitcoin price crashed all the way down to seventeen thousand six hundred and five dollars. And since then, the price has recovered pretty uh, impressively and it is currently approaching the 200 weekly moving average, which is this blue line that you see here at $22,517, right? So if this is the bottom, price continues to go higher and every retracement that you see, you just buy, right? Every retracement, because you assume and you kind of make this uh, initial assumption that this is the bottom and the price is not gonna go lower, right? And every dip that you buy basically adds more to your position and gives you more profit. Now, if you do it when the price of, when the asset is moving higher, your average would also increase as you buy more and more. And it depends on, you can kind of wait using the weightings. You can determine where the average is going to be. Like say you buy 10 Bitcoins here and then you buy two Bitcoins as the price goes up. That means your average is going to be centered around the most weighted uh, point of this particular transactions. So 
in bitcoin's case the in the first case there there's no need of uh, there's no need to talk about scaling in basically because you're do- just dollar cost averaging but if bitcoin price this is not the bottom for bitcoin price and the price continues to go lower then what you do is you buy bitcoins around where it is right now which is 21.2k and then you wait for the price to crash down to 17k and then you buy in again and then you wait, go and you wait for the price to go down to 15k buy again 13k buy again 12k buy again now basically that's how that's what scaling in is now once your cap now where does this end a it ends when you reach a targeted uh, amount or the targeted number say you want to buy 10000 bitcoins you obviously cannot do it in one go uh, considering the liquidity of the market you have to consider all of that stuff so the best option is to scale in that's what large corporations or institutions do during the bear market that's what warren buffet might might be doing as the stock market continues to crash so uh you either stop when your number for a particular asset is hit say say you wanted to buy 10000 bitcoins and you bought 10000 bitcoins that's where you stop or if the the capital ceases right say you have 100000 uh, dollars and you want to buy dogecoin 100000 dollars worth of dogecoin now you keep deploying funds as the price crashes and then once your funds are exhausted you stop but again right like it's it's not just blindly going in and start buying uh, as the price crashes right if you started buying dogecoin somewhere around here and your you, you exhaust your capital somewhere around here right so you buy, you exhaust all your capital within 200 days right but the price after that has crashed 37% so you would have to basically endure that loss and the duration so scaling in and dollar cost averaging are pretty similar but also the opposite perhaps the best way to explain scaling in dollar cost averaging would be to compare them to the two sides of the same coin right so both are good investment strategies uh, but for both of these strategies right you kind of have to have a sense of where an asset is going to bottom right for bitcoin if you watched my videos, I kind of mentioned that this green box ascending from 22K to 18K is where Bitcoin price should have bottomed. And it seems like we've kind of gone a little lower than the lower limit here, which is 18K. But the price seems to be recovering pretty neatly, right? The only thing that's left is to watch how price reacts to the 200 week moving average, right? Uh, if we kind of get a, reject- a rejection around this level here, then there's a good chance price could continue going lower. Or if we see another hedge fund or a major platform that is interconnected in the crypto market blow up then that could be the trigger which crashes bitcoin price down to 15.5k right uh, so like i mentioned right for scaling in all dollar cost averaging in it is pretty important to know where the bottom is going to happen like even if you do not know the exact price down to the decimals or you have to basically understand trends you have to understand cycles Right, let's take a look at Ethereum uh, from a scaling in perspective. Right, uh, so the void, if you haven't watched it, please go make sure to go and watch the previous videos. The void is, let me just briefly explain, the void is basically a de- uh, an area where there isn't a lot of volume traded. And how do you know that the area has not, not, a, lot, not, a, lot of, not a lot of volume traded in it? You take a look at the volume profiles. So basically the volume profile uh, for this particular chart explains that Ethereum price, not a lot of volume was traded between uh, 660 uh, to 1000, roughly 9000, 964. So anywhere between 600 to uh, 900 is where there was a lack of volume. And Ethereum seems to have pierced the upper limit of this volume void but the recovery seems to have set in for bitcoin back then which has led to a recovery of Bit- uh, ethereum as well but if you look at the uh, the volume profile charts here there is uh, a support level here at 661 but a breakdown of that could eventually push ethereum down to 383 dollars so it is really interesting to see how price is going to evolve and uh run up higher in the case that there is a chance ethereum price could crash lower you buy here you wait for the price to crash down to $700, $600, you buy more. And then you wait for the price to go down again at $383 and then crash uh, and then buy more. And if Ethereum starts to reverse around here, you just 
kick back, relax, and watch the price rally. Say it goes up to 500, right? You take the average, multiply it by the amount of Ethereum you bought, and then add each of those values, and you get your average buy-in price. Once price hits 5K, multiply all the Ethereum you have, subtract it from the initial capital that you are uh, deployed, you get your profits. So basically that is scaling in, kind of similar to dollar cost averaging, but you do it when the price starts to go down. Uh, for dollar cost averaging, you just do it regardless of the market conditions. Mostly it is applied mostly after or during the bottoming process, but scaling in is the opposite. So if you enjoyed this uh, take on scaling in and how you can position yourself, uh, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure to also go ahead and check out the DCA video that I did a few days ago.